Today we're going to be discussing many of the aspects of the plan for the business community and that y'all submitted to the city to help bring more businesses. Uh, please listen to the other segments as they're done discussing the concept plan or visit uh, www.makehaltemcitythriveagain.com to see the entire plan that the business community submitted to the city in early 2021. That's right. And, you know, there's a lot of ground to cover here in the concept plan. It's important to note that I didn't come up with the concept plan in a vacuum. I didn't just sit down and say, well, I think the city should do this, and I think the city should do that. I researched these books. We're going to talk about some of them as we work through the concept plan. And there's a, a wealth of information on the Internet about what some other cities with really bad rundown areas like Cincinnati, what they did to rebuild the city. And in almost all of those cases, perhaps all of them, it involved a partnership with all the stakeholders in the city, including the business community, usually in a big way, because they wanted that private investment. So Ron, talk us through the details of the concept plan. You know, the single biggest thing that should be done is to update the use matrix. Now let me explain the use matrix. People don't really understand that. They say, oh, you want to change the zoning. Well, in some cases, it may involve changing the zoning, but not usually. What people don't understand is within a given zoning category, certain uses are allowed. For instance, there's an industrial category. Well, in the industrial category, you can slaughter cattle. You can put in a cement kiln. You can have a junkyard. Some with a hearing, some without a welding shop, other things. Things we think of as intense uses. And, but the use table outlines all of those uses that are outlined in the industrial categories. So for instance, cattle slaughtering may be only allowed in the most intense industrial category, whereas uh, a welding shop is allowed in the easiest, least intense, all the way through the intense. They can be in any of those categories. And that heaviest use can't come below its heaviest use category. So, for instance, in Haltom City, there are, I believe, five commercial categories. They don't have a retail category. They consider it commercial. And they define with words what C1 is, which is the first category, what C2 is, what C3 is, C4, and C5. C5 is a more intense commercial category than C1. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm trying to think. I'm going to use the dry cleaners as an example because I mentioned it in a prior video. In Haltom City, C1 is the easiest, simplest neighborhood commercial retail office, which is also included use. C1 is the simplest. You can put a dry cleaner in in Haltom City without doing any public hearings or anything else. You come in, you say, I want to pay my fee, I want a CO, here's the address, I'm going to put a dry cleaners in. They'll, they'll do simple inspection probably, and you'll get your CO. But if you want to go in C2 or C3 or C4 or C5, you have to have a public hearing. Mm -hmm. And cities need to modify these use tables because there's no reason to have a dry cleaner, have to have a public hearing, to go in any commercial category. And so I think it's the single biggest thing. And when you start comparing one city against the others, you find that a lot of cities, of course, they don't even have five categories. They may only have three. Uh, arguably, I'm not sure you need five. But they do, they do allow uses to go in. Some councils want to talk to every business person. I know on Facebook last week, Jason Steele with the fire pack said, Ron, you're just wrong. In every city, you have to have a public hearing to open any business. Well, of course, I hate it when people say things they don't know anything about. Because in most cities, most business is open without a public hearing. Imagine what that'd be like for mm -hmm. the city council, how many meetings there'd be. So the use table determines where you're allowed to go. Sure. In Haldem City, that use table is more restrictive than in other cities. But it's simple to see that if you allow snow cone stands to go in all five categories, as opposed to just two of them, you'll probably get more snow cone more stands. Things. 
and it'll be easier for them to come in. So Ron, I understand that the average person uh, doesn't know how difficult zoning can be, or even the average businessman when he first tries it. Uh, what, have they considered moving to form-based uh, code in, instead of uh, using uh, the, the basis that they're using at this point? Well, I know uh, this was brought to my attention by Rebecca Boxall, which is, a, as you know, an Arlington City Councilwoman and also an architect. And form-based zoning, it's been around a long time, but it's very seldom used. But as we talked about zoning a while ago, you notice I kept talking about uses, a dry cleaner versus a cattle slaughtering. Under form-based zoning, the city promulgates or says or articulates what they want the area to look like. Okay, they don't, they don't say what can go in it, just what it should look like because they want to have a consistent look, okay? And uh, when you get away from use-based, under form-based zoning, for instance, under Strong Towns, which is the, uh, this good book, uh, it's a really good book that talks about a bottom-up revolution to rebuild American prosper prosperity, and it's all about form-based zoning and a lot of other changes, including infrastructure, budgets, how cities don't spend their money correctly, so on and so on. But under form-based zoning, he divides things into four buckets. Hmm. You know, our zoning evolved from the 60s and the 70s and the 80s. Things were different then. The needs were different then. And, you know, in this book here, Arbitrary Lines, How Zoning Broke the American City and How to Fix It. You know, Houston doesn't have any zoning. Absolutely none. Zero zoning. I'm not sure as I sit here that I can say Houston's at a disadvantage compared to some other American city. I'm sure we could all point to something that we wish hadn't happened in, in Houston. But we can also point to how easy it is to open a, a business perhaps in Houston because uh, you don't have to go through all that mess. But under form-based zoning in strong towns, the way he outlines it, and of course every city has their own version, but the principles are the same. He divides things into four buckets. Residential. We all understand what residential means. It's where we live. It's where our kids play in the streets. It's where we build a snowman in the winter. Commercial, which includes retail and office. Mm -hmm. Industrial, which is the more intense uses, cattle slaughtering, automotive repair, if you want to put it there. I personally think it belongs in commercial. And then other uses which really need to be regulated, sexually oriented businesses, cattle slaughtering, cement kilns, junkyards. We want to look at every single one of those. Makes perfect sense, perfect sense. But if you back that up to that commercial-based area, why can't a dancing studio exist next to a restaurant? Why do they have to be different? Why do they have to be in a different category? You know, I don't, I don't think anybody has a really good answer for that. Why can't a, uh, 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 a, a plumbing supply be located next to uh, a karate studio? Why can't they exist next to each other? And, you know, I'm sure there was a time, a point in time, where we thought we needed to regulate every ballet studio. I, it, yeah, you chuckle, but... It's, it's kind of easy to chuckle, isn't it? Yep, it is. Well, Saran, so tell us more about form-based zoning. I know that Mansfield has seen dramatic results from it. They have. Uh, and, you know, a lot of people say that form-based zoning only applies to walking districts, and yet Mansfield, or one of our sister cities, instituted it, and within a few months, to talking about revitalizing their old downtown, they got four major projects, so now they've expanded it to the freeway. Area. Well, I don't think the freeway area is a walking area by any means, but the principles are the same. If we make it easier for businesses to come, if we allow a ballet shop to come next door to a karate studio, to come next door to a uh, plumbing supply, to come next door to a dry cleaner, and we don't, we don't regulate them any further than that. That's all, that, th those are all in one category. We don't trigger change of use regulations under our current ordinances, then businesses hear about it and they come.